Well, Adam, peace be upon him. Science hasn't proved. There are high possibilities science will prove. Now, you may ask me, that brother, Zakir, you... Baby, you can call me a superman. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Tigal Fanilungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. So today I'm going to be reacting to Did Allah Say Anything About Alien in Quran, Dr. Zaki Naik? And this is an interesting video. I mean, do people actually believe that aliens exist? Do you believe that aliens exist? I don't know. I've got like mixed emotions, mixed emotions when it comes to these alien things. I just don't know what to believe. Has anyone actually come out and said, yes, aliens exist? I don't know. Anyway, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. Brother asked a very good question, very relevant question. Two questions, both the questions overlapping the answers. He said that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this last and final revelation 1400 years ago? Why not in day one when you mean me were there? And second part which is a part of the same question that what about the people who lived before 14 years ago? They were deprived of the Quran. So if Allah is most merciful, most gracious, most beneficent, so isn't it that the people earlier before for any other deprived? Very good question. To reply a question, my son, he tells me that Abba, father, you want me to become a doctor? Why do you want me nursery, first standard, second standard, then school, then college? Why don't you put me into medical college directly? If I want my son to become a medical doctor, I don't have to put him in the medical college directly. I have to first make the grounds very clear. First he goes into the pre-primary school, then goes into the school, first standard onwards on passes school, then goes to the higher school, then college, and when he's fit, then he enters the medical college. Similarly, Almighty God, who has knowledge of the unseen, and knowledge of everything, he even has knowledge of the human beings. So, it is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 38. Allah says, ajlin kitab, that we have sent a revelation in every age, in every period. By name, four are mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil, and the Quran. But there were several revelations sent. The first revelation, Almighty God knew that the human being had to develop. If he would have revealed the Quran at the first time, at the time, of Adam peace be upon him he knew the human beings won't be able to grasp it that is the reason in the revelation that came before the Quran that is the Injil today we have the Bible though we don't consider the Bible to be the Injil but some parts of the Bible may be the Word of God it's mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of John chapter number 16 verse number 20 to 14 Jesus Christ peace be upon him says I have many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now for he when the spirit of truth shall come he shall guide you unto all truth he shall show you the way to come he shall glorify me so here Jesus Christ peace be upon him he knew but yet he said that you will not be able to grasp it therefore when the last and final messenger will come he will show you things to come so similarly Almighty God he knew very well that when is the right time for the human beings to receive the last and final revelation the Quran and that was about 1400 years ago as far as the second part of the question is concerned what about the people that came before the Quran was revealed I will tell them that if my son goes to standard one he will not be given the medical question paper he'll be given the question paper of standard one if he goes to higher school he'll be given the question of higher school then junior college fine so similarly the basic message of Almighty God in all the scriptures, in all the revelations, from the first revelation till the last revelation, Quran was the same, that you have to believe in one God, that you have to worship Him and no one else. So all the messengers, right from the first messenger, Adam, peace be upon him, right down to Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, all of them taught the basic message of oneness of God and about Tawheed. And about this message, of oneness of God and Tawheed, inshallah, I'll be discussing in detail on the last day of this conference, on the last Sunday, that the 20th of January, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. It is given by Almighty 
Good evening again, everyone. Uh, it was amazing to see how much uh, science that the glorious Quran contained after your talk. But in most of the examples from the Quran which you gave, it is very difficult to comprehend what the Quran tells before actually the science discovers or invents that particular phenomenon. For example, you said, in the honey, there is healing of humanity in the Quran. And you mentioned it as it's about if a person is maybe say poisoned with a plant, the honey of the plant should be taken. So, what is the use, say, of a almighty holy scripture talking about things which you are only able to comprehend after the real invention is made by science? So, can you tell me now something from the Quran which will be invented by science later or yet to be invented? Well, that's a very good question that I've mentioned many things about science indirectly saying all this was already discovered earlier. And if Quran says something and after science has discovered, so what's the use? Can you tell me something which science hasn't discovered? Brother, that's the reason the Arabs who advanced in the field of astronomy. Why? Because they read the Quran. The Quran has a lot of information on astronomy. So when they read the Quran, they try and do more investigation. They do more research. And that's how they come to know. Quran is a telegraphic message. So the book of science, only on one subject, in medicine, one subject only requires volumes. So if that way the Quran is, this Quran, most of the human beings, they don't like to read. Oh, such a big book. So if God Almighty wrote in detail, then even a big building, you will require thousands of buildings to contain the message of the Quran. Quran is telegraphic message. So in telegraphic message, many of the Muslims, they read the Quran and they made advances in science. That's the reason we find if you go back into history, the Muslims advanced in science and technology. But you pose the question, forget about the past. What about today? All what I've mentioned has been discovered earlier, but many of them were discovered by Muslims, some by non-Muslims, some by Europeans. What about things which science hasn't discovered? Fine. First, I'll tell you those things which science hasn't established, but yet there are high chances, which Quran has testified, and I believe in it. For example, Quran says in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 29, that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the creatures in the heavens and the earth and has placed creatures in them. So Quran says there is life beside this earth. Today science hasn't proved there is life beside this earth. Scientists say there are high possibilities that life will be there beside this earth. So they're sending rockets, spaceships, moon, Mars, Quran says there's life besides this earth, I believe in it. Science may discover it tomorrow, after five years, after ten years, after hundred years, Quran says, I believe in it. Today, there are many hypotheses. How the world will end? It says that the sun will become big and the world will end. The mountains will fall down, the mountains will become smooth, the ocean will swell up. The world will enter into a black hole. Many hypotheses. Many of these hypotheses, not all, they match with the Quran. Quran says in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 8 and 9, that the sun and the moon, they will join together. The sun will be buried in darkness. If it's Surah Takhvir, chapter number 81, verse number 1, 2 and 3, it says that the stars will fall down and lose their luster. The mountains will fall down to utter ruin. The ocean will swell up. It's mentioned in Surah Infitar. Chapter number 82, verse number 1 and 2 and 3, again the ocean will swell up. The stars will fall down. Similar to many of the hypotheses. But Quran says, I believe in it. Quran further says, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 104, we have created this creation, we will destroy it and create a new creation. Science hasn't discovered that yet. Quran speaks about life after death. Science hasn't proved that yet. Quran speaks about heaven and hell. Science hasn't proved about that. Quran speaks about jinn. Today, psychologists say extraterrestrial power. There are some people who get possessed with jinns. Quran speaks about that. Quran speaks the first man on the earth, was Adam, peace be upon him. Science hasn't proved. There are high possibilities science will prove. Now, you may ask me that, Brother Zakir, you gave such a good talk on science and technology, but 100% solid proof. You believe in life after death? You believe in jinn? You believe in heaven and hell? You a doctor? Isn't this unscientific? I said, no brother. I believe that 
it is scientific. Suppose whatever the Quran has mentioned, 80% has proved to be 100% correct. I spoke about astronomy, about geology, water cycle, oceanography, botany, biology, zoology. So just hypothetically, 80% what the Quran has mentioned, suppose, has been proved to be 100% correct. The remaining 20% is ambiguous. Neither right, neither wrong. Not even 0.1% of that 20% which is ambiguous has been proved to be wrong. There is not a single verse of the Quran which can be proved false by established science. Hypothesis. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct, and the remaining 20% is ambiguous, but not even 0.1% of that 20% is proved wrong. So my logic says that even that 20% inshallah will be correct. If not today, tomorrow, after 50 years, after 100 years, after 1000 years, Allah alam, God knows, they will prove there is life after death. They will prove there is jinn. They will prove there is hell. There is proof there is heaven and so on and so forth. I can give another lecture on things which science hasn't proved, but inshallah will prove. Hope that answers the question. I wish answers were as easy as yes or no. I feel like... Are we supposed to believe in what science says? Because sometimes science just takes things too far. Although I have to agree with the fact that he mentioned God said that there is a life in existence other than what we know now. I guess we just have to open our eyes and see certain things. So was this, so was this video trying to say aliens do exist, aliens don't exist? What? Can please someone help me with that? Otherwise, these alien things, they're creepy, but then we also have to think about how things are going now. They said life may be possible out of earth so if earth is ever destroyed what happens they say i think they planted was it a potato was it a plant on some other planet i've forgotten what it was so is it possible to move from earth to another planet and maybe start all over or maybe what's the whole point of god making it possible for other planets to give life or maybe life or maybe allow life to be possible on them what does that mean i'm just curious but anyway let me know how you think or feel about aliens or what you know about aliens and just comment in the section below make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video